Horses teeth break all the time, mostly their cheek teeth. Very rarely the canines or the incisors unless there's some trauma. But we're talking about just fractured cheek teeth. And what I mean by that is every tooth has what's called a pulp chamber. They actually have several pulp chambers, multiple ones. And in those pulp chambers will start some decay and the decay will start to eke away at the structure that holds the tooth together. Think of a log that has a wedge put in it that is driven in to split the log into uh, firewood. Now, if you're from an area that doesn't have that, I don't really have another idea or analogy for you other than a knife cutting through a block of cheese or something that divides a whole body into parts. Now, most of the fractures that occur, occur in the direction from the front of the horse to the back of the horse, in this direction, and we call them sagittal fractures. On occasion, you can get them going this way, which are transverse, and of course, the one that cuts them straight off like this, those are called coronal fractures. And each fracture is basically taking a piece of the tooth and moving it away. Now, what's really interesting, and is not really consistent with a firewood log analogy, is that if you have a whole tooth that's coming together and this decay occurs and starts to split this in half, what happens is about some, somewhere down the tooth, usually at the gum line, it just snaps off. It just completely breaks off while the remaining part of the tooth and the base of the tooth stay together and are healthy. The decay is in between here and the horse just snaps it off and lets all that decay go away. Because there's no sensitive structure where this decay is, the sensitive structures are much further down in the tooth, so it really doesn't bother the horse. In fact, most people don't even know their horse has a broken tooth until we come do a regular exam and, and discover it. On a rare occasion, that break can go into the cheek or into the tongue, and then it can become painful secondary to that the ulcer that's created. So fractures are common. Uh, I don't really have a good number for you, but I'd say at least one or two in every hundred that we see, which is pretty, pretty substantial. So in a thousand, we'll see 10 to 20 fractured teeth. Um, and it could be even more than that. If you include the small slivers that sometimes fall off, these little shards that occur, um, and they're just hanging on by the gum line to a tooth split right down the middle all the way down to the root system. So we have all sorts of different kinds. But the idea of a routine regular floating is to discover these things and to remove the fractured tooth part. On occasion, the break hasn't occurred yet. The split has occurred, but it hasn't snapped off. And what we wait for is for it to snap off, and this could take sometimes up to a year or two. Um, on occasions, we'll go in there and we say, oh yeah, this one's definitely broken off. But what happens is as we pull it off, it snaps off, right, when we're extracting it. And there's no reason to get concerned over this. It's basically gonna snap off anyway. We just helped it along. So uh, fractured teeth occur very commonly. The whole tooth does not have to come out. The fractured piece does have to come out. And it's just a matter of manipulating the instrument in there uh, in a way that we can grab onto it. And oftentimes we drug the horse. But on several occasions, we've been able to take these things out just using our fingers to get it out of the way. And the horse always shows gratefulness because the tongue is now looking at this as what I call a focus of an of um, attention. Uh, kind of like something stuck between your uh, teeth and you keep manipulating your tongue in there. Well, the tongue is in there trying to get this thing out. And as it does, it will sharpen those edges into what I call an S5 or sharp as razors. Um, so uh, we have to get in there and not only extract that tooth, but to file down all the sharp edges and give this horse a chance to recover. And sometimes three months and certainly six months later we'll come back and there's still a little bit of sharp edges in that area and we just keep filing down and make the horse comfortable. So that's what broken teeth are, broken cheek teeth. Um, nothing really to worry about. Um, it, it, it's self-limiting other than the tooth gets to become a focus of attention and bothers the horse sometimes. Um, that's broken teeth.